Good afternoon, everyone. Remember the day after tomorrow? Massive North Pacific cyclone, massive North Atlantic cyclone. Air pressure is too low for propeller airplanes to fly out of Norway. Phenomenal jet stream fueling record transatlantic flight. Record snow in Iran. Over a hundred years snowfall southern Iraq, Baghdad. Our atmosphere is definitely bending in this grand solar minimum. As we head toward an election later this year, the U.S.-China trade war has taken a back seat to the massive disruption in global shipping and logistics from the largest factory closures witnessed in our modern era across Asia, Brexit and concerns over cyber threats globally. Only one investment stands out, gold. Patriot Gold Group has no fee-for-life IRAs where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver. At Patriot, you work directly with an owner and avoid paying absurd broker fees. Call today or request a free investment kit. PatriotGoldGroup.com. The link's in the description box below. Starting off here, Severe Weather EU. Anybody remember the movie Day After Tomorrow? Two incredibly powerful extratropical cyclones, North Pacific and North Atlantic. But behind the North Pacific, there's another one following directly behind it. This has been the epic year of cyclonic spin in the Northern Hemisphere, far exceeding the record of these types of storms, one after another, after another, after another, after another. Is it geoengineering? Or is it the grand solar minimum and our weakening magnetosphere? Now, last year, we saw the exact same phenomenon, but in reverse. The transatlantic flight speed record was set from London to San Francisco. But this time, it's in reverse, where the transatlantic flight record was from the United States over to London. Now, what is it with the increasing velocity and speed of our atmospheric winds projected during this grand solar minimum to intensify right on cue? And also what's most interesting is incredibly low atmospheric pressure below 940 millibars grounding North Norway flights. Historic low pressure is what they call it. Now, these propeller-driven planes... Their cockpit altimeters are not able to calculate the distance of the aircraft to the ground when the pressures are so low. 200 plus flights were canceled. And even the head of the Norwegian Pilots Association saying, wow, this thing is incredibly rare. Never saw it before. They heard about it once. 1907 apparently is when this occurred. But what's also rare about this storm is, as it went inland, the pressure continued to stay low and drop further. Usually it's the inverse. Once it reaches inland, it starts to build on pressure again. But the anomalies we're seeing across the atmosphere right now absolutely are something unprecedented. Well, unless you're looking into multi-century, 400-year cycles in solar activity, driving these changes in our atmosphere. This record either apparently tied or broke the... 938 and a half millibars recorded in 1907. It was at or near this very low, so they're calculating a new record, so it must have been lower, but they're not giving exact specifics on this, which I found strange. You think if they would have had the millibar readings at 938, 937, they could have put that up there, but I couldn't find it in the article. Everything's linked below. You can dig into the pilots' associations and see what their chat boards are talking about for this particular phenomenon. And also, take a look at the Middle East, 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal temperatures all the way down into Central Africa, Saudi Arabia, into parts of Yemen. And I thought for sure that has to bring some snow along with this incredible weather front pushing through. And sure enough, take a look at the depths. You see right in the center, below the play button there, that's a human walking. Snowfall, record snows, 3 feet, 4 feet, some places drifts up to 8 feet. Now, they get snow every year and eat on. Don't kid yourself. Every year they're getting snow. But at this amount, and then last year they experienced the same thing, record snowfall. But when we came to summer this year, they had record rainfall. So what is it with all the precipitation built across the Middle East? This explains the locusts. There's just more food for them to eat. And a new grow zone is emerging in this area. 
Let's take a look at the highway stranding scenes here. Apparently when the snow was falling, at some point it got up to almost a foot per hour at the height of the storm with the blowing, drifting snow. Stranded everybody right where they were on the highway. When they were started to drive, snow started to build and build, and then there was just nowhere there for them to go. So look at the dig out. The army had to help dig these cars out, and they're trying to get transportation up and running again. But this was a record-breaking phenomenon, even in Edan. And jumping over to Incredible Rare, Snowfall blanketing Baghdad and Karbala in Iraq. The last time they had anything remotely close to this was over 100 years ago when they had snowfall south of Baghdad. Now the area where Baghdad is and further south, it's just too warm down there. It never snowed in the last century. And then here we are expecting multi-century shifts in climate with this grand solar minimum. And imagine that, 100 years snowfall plus, Middle East, southern Iraq. This is the tweet where that amazing image came from here. From Muna Baker, thank you for putting that out and showing us your parents' backyard in Karbala. And also some other images coming out on the palm trees in Baghdad. This is so rare. They were shocked. They were amazed. They couldn't believe it. They're wiping their eyes like, are we, is this a mirage? What are we seeing out here? In Kurdistan, Iraq, I mean, they do get snow every year, but take a look at the depths here. And I thought, wow, is that a truck over there on the bottom right? Sure enough, widening out on the image there. That's Iraq, that's record snow, that's not normal. So not normal seems to be the new normal. And again, it's all going to be explained away. Everything's calm, everything's good. Your food will still be there. Uh, yeah, you might want to double check on those suppliers. Also, northwest Syria, winter exodus, record snow up there too. I thought, now where is this area here that they talked about in Sahel al Gab? This is a agricultural zone area that's in a deep valley. So as we look at on the map here, what you're going to look at is that top left there, right along the Mediterranean Sea. It usually has its own microclimate. A, it's really low, like Death Valley. It's much lower than the areas around it. And it's got the microclimate from the Mediterranean. And again, this snow is so unprecedented that they're like, wow, where did this come from? But here's a wide view to see exactly what this agricultural zone looks like. And if you believe that there would be Six to nine inches of snow in this area. Our atmosphere is full of surprises, and everywhere you look, it's record snow, record wind, anomalous this, anomalous that. And with all these climate records being set across the planet in the Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere as well, with record heat in Antarctica, you know one of the bright spots for us here on this channel, Adapt 2030, has been the monthly merch designs. Thank you for the support. It's been a lot of fun bringing awareness and climate preparedness to our community. And for those of you who do understand, it is time to store more. You see everything else going across the planet as well as the changes in growing seasons that are going to limit even what we're going to be planting this year. It's incredibly wet already. They're looking for delays. So let us know in the comments what you think of this February merch with Store More Sunspots. The link to our Teespring shop is in the description box below, as well as My Patriot Supply, long-term food storage, two-week grab-and-go food crate, or the four-week food supply. And as I've said before, this is one of the only suppliers left with this type of long-term emergency food. So many smaller companies have been completely bought out. There's an institutional buyer out there taking whatever they can get their hands on. So that should be a signal for you also to notice that something unusual is going on and why is so much of this emergency food being bought up by larger players. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I appreciate the support on this channel and I will see you next time.